The collectible car market is on fire and has grown substantially in the last years. And that means that it would be great to know which cars will go up in value and which factors determine the car's value. But is that even possible? What's up YouTube and welcome to a new video. Now collectible cars fall under something which you can call emotional assets. And that means that they are predominantly bought because the buyer has an emotional attachment to them. It might have been a dream car for someone, a car which reminds them of a person they love, or simply functions as a status symbol. Moreover, owning a collectible car also often comes with a social aspect, as you often become part of a certain car community. However, it's no secret that a substantial proportion of collectible car buyers also hope for a financial gain. One paper reported that 23% of the classic car owners in Germany bought their car primarily as an investment. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any numbers for the US market. Now I know that buying cars solely as an investment is a sensitive subject and that opinions on this subject differ widely among you, my viewers. However, from a financial perspective, it's hard to blame the people who participate in this game. One of the most recent papers on this subject shows that on a risk-adjusted basis, classic cars have outperformed equity and other emotional assets such as art, but underperformed bonds and gold over the past two decades. Now there is some debate on the height of the outperformance, but it's fair to conclude that collectible cars were not a bad place for your money. Moreover, besides the financial return, collectible cars also offer portfolio diversification benefits, as correlations to traditional indices tend to be low. Now just as with other emotional assets like art and wine or more traditional assets like stocks, it would be great if we could predict the factors which are setting the price and also predict where prices are going. And this is of course something which would be especially of interest to the people who are buying their car primarily as an investment object. Yet, unlike literature for the other asset classes, there's almost nothing available on collectible cars. Most of it is descriptive in nature and benchmarks the financial returns to other asset classes. However, more recently, a few papers were published which try to predict prices for collectible cars, and perhaps these efforts are well justified. One paper for example argues that the classic car market is quite comparable to the wine market, a market in which it turned out to be possible to make value predictions. So the same might go for the collectible car market. But before we dive into the details of actually predicting collectible car values, let's first discuss how such a thing might actually work. Now if you were to predict the value of a car, you would probably have a look at some of the characteristics of a car. What brand is it, what model and model year, and what is the mileage. And based on this information, you are likely to go to a car website and compare the car to similar examples. Based on this, you would eventually end up with a value prediction. And this process is similar to the way in which a prediction model for car prices works. Now to make such a model, you first of all need a lot of historical data on the cars which are sold and the factors which affect the value. A prediction model will learn the relationship between the factors which affect the value and the actual selling price. So when you feed the same factors to the model, but for a car which you would like to predict the value for, you get a value prediction. If the predicted values are close to the actual selling prices, you could conclude that your model makes good predictions. Now many car related papers focus on predicting the value for your everyday cars. After all, that's relatively easy. There is plenty of data and those cars follow a relatively stable value development. For collectible cars, it's more tricky. There is less data and values can fluctuate a lot. In fact, I found only one paper which made an effort to predict the values of collectible cars. But if you know of other work, please comment below as I would love to find out more. The paper which I found is a master thesis written by Pedro Miguel. He gathered auction data from Sotheby's, a famous auction house, and tried to predict the hammer prices for each car. And after some data cleaning, he ended up with a data set of approximately 29,000 cars which were auctioned between 2002 and 2020, and 18 variables with which he wanted to explain the price variation. Now to structure these 18 variables, he divided them into four groups. A group related to the auction characteristics, such as the year of the auction and the auction season, Brand characteristics such as the actual brand and its location, the car characteristics such as the model and the mileage, and the creative one, a group which describes the sentiment of the vehicle's description text. Now with this data set of 29,000 cars and four variable groups, 11 techniques were used to predict the hammer prices of the cars, but it's beyond the scope of this video to discuss each and every one of those techniques. So let's have a look at the results. Unfortunately, these were a bit disappointing. None of the 11 techniques which were used yielded a satisfactory result. The prediction error was roughly $26,000. So this means that when you use the model to make a prediction of the hammer price, you are, on average, 
$26,000 off from the actual hammer price. Now this is not too bad if the average hammer price would be $1 million, yet this is not the case. The average hammer price was around $154,000, so in relative terms you would be off quite a lot. Now there was of course some variation in the results for the 11 methods which were tested, but none of them really shined. So does this mean then that it is impossible to predict car prices for collectible cars? Not per definition. As the work is among the first which attempts to make these predictions, there are some obvious limitations. For example, due to data limitations, not all of the important variables for the hammer price of a car were included. It for example excluded the condition of the car, which we all know is a key driver. A different study which included the car's condition and also other important characteristics about the car like the racing history, found that it was possible to capture 70% of the variation in hammer prices by looking only at the physical characteristics of a car. And this is based on 29,000 classic car auction results between 1998 and 2017. Now if you are an investor, both results may lack the precision you are after. Both results do then also only include idiosyncratic factors such as the car characteristics. And even though that we saw that these were important, in isolation they don't provide the most accurate predictions. Something which could help to increase the performance might be the inclusion of external factors. The state of the economy, for example, or a proxy of this, might be an important price driver. When it comes to car prices, I'm not aware of any study which investigates this relationship in detail. Though, we might find evidence in other collectible markets. One paper for example showed that art prices in Britain between 1908 and 2005 can be explained to some extent by the income of the top 0.1% earners in the country. As the study concludes, this supports the view that art buying is a form of conspicuous consumerism. In other words, it has an important role in the social competition among the rich. Moreover, literature about the art market argues that price records are set in, among other things, situations of social competitions. To some extent, the previous claims about the art market might then also apply to collectible or classic car markets. The market characteristics overlap to some extent, and so do the buyers. Yet, for now, it merely remains a hypothesis. Now contrary to what we just talked about, evidence also shows that the correlation between classic car prices and the stock market is very low. And since equities might be a good proxy for the state of the economy, this might indicate that there's simply no obvious relationship between the two. But remember, we're only talking about correlation here, not causation. Now besides the state of the economy, there might be another important variable which might help to explain the prices for collectible cars and that is the previous price for which a car was sold. Collectible cars trade hands infrequently, and this means that a previously sold car of the same type is often used as a reference. As a result of this, prices can frequently spiral up or down as prices themselves are stuck in a positive or negative reinforcing feedback loop. And this is something which, for example, might be going on in the Carrera GT market right now. The question is of course then, what determines when the price increase halts or turns? I don't have an evidence-based answer for that, so let's go to the conclusion. We saw that it is possible to predict the price of collectible cars to some extent and that the literature shows that it are mainly the car characteristics which set the price. For example, a car which is in top condition can be worth more than two and a half times the price of the same car, which is only in a fair condition. But this is nothing new. From my perspective, the results are then also not good enough to have any practical usage. However, we need to remember that classic and collectible cars fall on the extreme side of the scale. We can think of a continuum where we have all the way on the right hand side the extreme collectible cars like the Ferrari 250, and on the other side of the scale we have your everyday cars like a Toyota Camry and a Ford F-150. The more we move from the left to the right, the more difficult it becomes to predict the values. So why is this the case? Well, the more we move to the right, the more the consumption value changes. All the way on the left hand side a car is mainly a means of transportation, while all the way at the other end of the scale, the car might purely be bought for admiration of the design and the viewing pleasure. And as a famous study about the art market concluded, in such a situation, it's unlikely that prices will move towards an equilibrium. Rather, they float more or less aimlessly and their price oscillations have a tendency to be exacerbated by the people who treat the objects as investments. That is also why my channel tends to focus on the middle of the scale. Videos featuring cars on the left hand side tend to be a bit pointless, as it is not so difficult to figure out the depreciation of a Toyota Camry. Videos for cars on the right hand side, however, 
would also be very troublesome. It is difficult to make price indices for them and it is even more difficult to assign a reliable trend and predict with some degree of certainty how values will develop in the future. Now if you like this video, please click on the like button down below as it really helps to support the channel. I cannot stress this enough. Thank you. And with that we arrive at the end of this video. As always, a big thank you for watching and don't forget that you can let me know in the comment section below for which car you would like to see an analysis. When you do so, don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell so you'll get actually notified when your requested analysis goes live. 